Hello everyone, this is John Kogan. I'm the CEO of Performative, the online community for corporate finance, accounting, treasury, and related professionals. I would like to welcome everyone to today's webinar, The Evolving Role of Finance Leaders Owning Technology Optimization. As the role of finance leaders continues to evolve, the office of the CFO now has much more ownership of technology adoption. Finance leaders need to not only understand which systems his or her staff need, but also understand the needs of employees across the enterprise that impact productivity, support growth, and drive profitability. This webinar will illustrate how finance leaders can successfully own technology across their enterprise by leveraging current and emerging trends in cloud and related technologies. I would like to uh, thank, before we get going, both Host Analytics and NetSuite, two companies clearly steeped in cloud technologies, uh, for sponsoring today's event and allowing us to do this webinar, like everything we do at Performative, at no cost to our users. Uh, so thanks to uh, both Host Analytics and NetSuite. Got a few items we'd like to go through very briefly before we get into uh, the meat of today's program. Uh, first off is a quick welcome to Performative. Uh, Performative is the largest and fastest growing online community and resource for senior level corporate finance, treasury, and related professionals. It's a very practical, completely noise free and free, as in no cost, uh, platform. Uh, it's a great resource to get peer based information. Um, truly nothing quite like it, uh, literally tens of thousands of CFOs, controllers, treasurers in the works, uh, online uh, sharing knowledge, uh, it's all free and no selling or self-promotion. So it's a great resource and I hope you check it out if you haven't already. Got a few items um, around today's event that I'd like to touch on very briefly. Number one, a link to today's presentation and a link to the video of this webinar, which we're recording right now, will be sent out to all attendees within 24 hours of this event. Uh, the presentation itself is already posted at performative.com slash resources, so that URL you see right there. And within 24 hours, we will also post a link to the recording of this webinar. So if you want to follow along, print it out, take notes, what have you. You can grab that right now. Of course, it's free uh, on Performative, and um, that's available uh, as we speak. Next up, we are offering CPE credits uh, this morning. And in order to get the CPE credits, you not only need to be here, you need to answer three polling questions. We will ask these three polling questions uh, throughout the uh, program this morning. We have a 60-minute program. Uh, you need to answer all three of those. I would also ask that even if you're not here for CPE credits, that you answer the question. They are statistical in nature. It's always interesting to find out uh, who's doing what. And uh, if we have enough time, what we'll do is actually turn those polling questions around at the end so that you can see uh, where your peers stand relative to these questions. Um, so those CPE questions will be coming up throughout today's event. Next up, speaking of questions, please ask questions as we go. Uh, if you take a quick look at your GoToWebinar control panel, you'll see there's a little section there called questions. We encourage you to ask questions at any point of today's program. And uh, what we have uh, lined up today is two brief presentations, and then we'll follow that with a Q&A section. Uh, so during that Q&A, we'll be answering your questions. So feel free to ask at any time. We'll queue them up, and we'll do our best to get to all of them when we get to the Q&A portion of the event. Finally, after the event, you will be asked to take a short survey. That's about 60 seconds. Um, and what's uh, great about this is, A, you can give us feedback and tell us what we should do better next time or what you liked, and we'll try doing more of that. Um, also, we make it very easy to connect either with the speakers or the sponsors at our event today. So uh, we've got two wonderful speakers, both longtime finance executives. And if you'd like to connect with either of them, let us know. It's a click of a mouse, very quick and easy. Um, also, if you'd like to connect with either of today's sponsor companies to request more information, et cetera, you can do that with a click of a mouse. Uh, so please do stick around uh, for that short survey. Uh, we'd love to get the feedback. Next up, we do have a number of learning objectives this morning, and I'm not going to go through uh, this entire uh, list here. Uh, but the long and short of it is there's an amazing amount of technology. I mean, never has there been uh, this much technology available to finance, accounting, and treasury organizations in the corporate world. And it's available across the spectrum, from on-premise to cloud-based technologies to mobile. Um, what we're hoping that we uh, get across to you today is some perspective from longtime practitioners who really leverage technology in their finance organizations, at multi, uh, not only at their current companies, but at multiple companies that they might 
consult with. Uh, and we hope that you come away with not only uh, sort of a survey of what's available out there and how some uh, leaders uh, in finance are using that, but also uh, some ideas for what you might be able to do at your company. So um, without further ado, why don't we go ahead and get into the first uh, presentation today. And that's going to be led by Tom Kelly. So Tom is Managing Director at T. Edward, Inc. And as a Managing Director of T. Edward, Tom serves as Strategic Partner and CFO for several unique client companies. Uh, just a selection of Tom's portfolio includes companies such as Cardia Health Systems and On-Point Medical Diagnostics, two organizations that were created by commercializing software IP from leading healthcare institutions, TriPrima Inc., which offers computing infrastructure and storage as a service delivered in a private cloud, and FeedLogic Corporation, a leader in intelligent feed systems and informatics for livestock. Tom has held senior management positions with large publicly held companies like PepsiCo and Deluxe Corporation, as well as small cap and privately held entities. Uh, Tom is a CPA with an MBA in finance from Fordham University and a BA in accounting from NC State University. Tom, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Uh, thank you, John. So uh, let's get right into it here. So. Uh, Let's talk about how the uh, the cloud can primarily transform your role as CFO. So, uh, back in my day when I started, this was the uh, the first thing I used in order to add numbers together, the uh, the abacus. But you know, frankly speaking, I'm sure we've all been there with the uh, the uh, adding machine and the tape and punching in the numbers and doing all the great stuff. In terms of our progression as a group, I think then we moved up from let's say green eye shade to bean counter. Uh, so once again, kind of being viewed as just the person who's going to crunch the numbers, uh, not really leveraging technology to the extent uh, that we could for various reasons that uh, we'll get into here in a little bit. But then, all of a sudden, we can start to adopt some of this technology. Uh, we start to leverage the old technology. So um, given the challenge, the opportunity, whatever you uh, choose to uh, to use there, um, it became quite a uh, quite a, a challenge to, let's say, connect all of your systems together. Um, my days were spent uh, many a management meeting of, you know, arguing whose information was right, uh, uh, VP of sales, uh, man, VP of manufacturing, the finance, CFO, the CEO. Uh, coming into the meeting, we all have our sheets of paper coming off of our disparate systems, and we're trying to make sense of what's going on with the business. Um, and know that the twain shall meet, and many of you have probably embarked on putting the wonderful BI tool in the middle, uh, which you know can help, but without having it in the cloud, I can I can speak from experience. It was quite uh, quite unsuccessful in many regards. So, so to where we are today, and as John had mentioned, and as my my colleague here on the call, Kelly Battles, will talk later, um, leveraging cloud technology. And if I had to give you an analogy of this, uh, that's a picture of uh, Ed Harris who played the. Uh, uh, the NASA uh, control gentleman, Gene Kranz. Uh, so mission control, when you think about that, that analogy, if you can leverage cloud technology, you'd be amazed at how close you can become to almost being you know, mission control for your organization and all, all aspects of your organization. So as I talk about becoming mission control, uh, what we're able to do by leveraging some of the cloud-based technology that's available to us today is you can become this person that would provide the historical backward-looking information. In other words, uh, this is what we sold. Um, this is what we sold it at. Um, we're probably about three weeks out from the prior month, and uh, pretty much everybody in the organization is on to the next thing, trying to drive the business forward. But yet we're working with this, you know, historical information that, you know, believe it or not, even at a three-week time frame, can be considered out of date. Um, what we're able to do now relative to cloud platforms is the information is real time. So as an example, if, um, if finance decides to put a, uh, a customer on credit hold and that salesperson is actually sitting in a meeting talking to that customer, you can literally set up alerts that will also all of a sudden pop up on your smartphone, pop up on your tablet. That's going to tell you this customer has just been placed on credit hold. You're even going to have the ability to drill into that and find out why they're placed on credit hold. So talk about real time. That's you know up to the minute. The other thing to think about now, though, is this information is accessible 24-7, 365, meaning it's never down, it's always up, it's always available, as long as you have technically a high-speed internet connection. 
And what's also interesting in this day and age, as we've just seen recently with the wonderful iPad Mini that's come out, there are a variable amount of devices that you can access this information on. Um, so it's not just where you have to be at the office plugged in, but you, as long as you have a mobile uh, smartphone or a tablet, you'd be amazed at the wealth and the breadth of data that you can have access to and interact with. And really, I think when you talk about a business, information is what it's all about. So information is. It's the, it's the key thing that's going to help an organization make the right decision. Um, but if that information is not timely, uh, not accurate, not accessible, um, you're somewhat dead in the water and you're kind of operating you know, with a historical thing. It's kind of like uh, you know, pushing a cart where you have the wheels that turn in, you know, in the back of you and you're trying to angle it and move it. And it becomes very, very difficult to navigate. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about my personal experience and, and uh, kind of what I've experienced. So I want to go back to 2007. And at the time, I was at a company called Second One Exercise Equipment. And to say that their IT infrastructure was archaic um, is an understatement. The point of sale system was running on, believe it or not, a Fox Pro database. Um, and it got worse from there. We were leveraging a version of Outlook that I think was, oh gosh, I think uh, Microsoft had given up supporting it uh, probably three years prior. Um, so if you think about that, you've got this infrastructure. We literally had a closet with servers in it and everything. Um, and how are you going to get this company to take a leap forward, to be able to come into the you know, 21st century, if you will, from what I would say was the 19th century, um, and do it in a way that you know, you're not just going to slam stuff in so that employees are just going to not be able to understand what they're doing, how to interact with the software, what they want to get out of it. But if you took it, take an approach and we made a decision, we're going to put everything into the cloud. Uh, and I'll fast forward to the point where we literally had a, uh, we had a funeral uh, about 12 months later where we literally buried the last server in the ground behind the uh, office. So uh, to the point where you would take a situation where you would put something in place and people could act upon it now and the information would be real time understanding what equipment you sold at what time if you're having a certain promotion going on, understanding what type of lift you might get from a radio commercial or a TV commercial. It was pretty profound what we were able to do. But more importantly, the 61% annual savings was somewhat eye-opening. Um, the analysis here, you see it's 2007 to 2009. What, what is missing there is the costs that we avoided. Uh, one quick thing I'll talk about is with uh, email and calendaring. So Outlook, we were going to have to upgrade to Outlook. If we went that route, we were going to have to buy a new server. We were going to have to upgrade to the new software, pay for the new maintenance. Even the situation where you can outsource that today, right? So you can have a provider who's going to, you know, uh, host your email and calendaring, et cetera. We chose Google Apps. And one other thing I'll point out about that, this is 2007 when we chose Google Apps. They did not have... Google did not have any mobile offering. It was minimal. I mean, you couldn't access anything on a smartphone. Think about where that's at today for those of you who are familiar with it. In five years, I would tell you that that offering is probably the most robust uh, mobile capability uh, provided to you, whether it's the devices that are coming from Google, the company itself, or any other uh, mobile device. So the point um, that I want to make here is that this was a decision that was made holistically with the organization. So it required collaboration of all the functions and primarily uh, finance and IT. And what was interesting is how much we were able to change that IT orientation from uh, what I would consider many times are an inhibitor when technology is supposed to be an enabler, where we change their role of being the you know Gestapo lockdown, you can't have access, to almost the... Uh, the CEO of user experience. So their job was to maximize the user experience regardless of the application, regardless of the hardware you were using, laptop, tablet, smartphone, etc. So um, another interesting thing is when we started this, we thought it would take us 18 months to get from beginning to end. And this is the truth. The team was able to do it in nine months. And what I would probably tell you is if you kind of unbound yourself from some of the on-premise um, paradigms that exist today, it's amazing about how quickly you can get an organization and transfer over to the cloud. So that's one time, right? So is it a one-trick pony? You know, does this work in other things? Well, I can tell you my second time, uh, we put about eight companies into the cloud. Uh, a little bit easier. Some of these were relatively brand new companies, so they didn't have a lot of legacy, but some of them have been around for several years. But the point I guess I would make to all of you is this is uh, repeatable. 
I believe it can be done by anybody if you do your you, know, you do your homework and you partner with the right type of cloud providers. But at the end of the day, um, a lot of I think the scare tactics that are put out there, you know, security, et cetera, you know, uptime availability. I honestly think you can liken that to the uh, the Michelin tire commercial that you may have seen, where they have a baby in a tire, and basically, if, you know, you're a parent like I am, and God forbid does your car not have Michelin tires on it, you know, you're you're a horrible parent. Well, same thing can be true of the I think the fair tactics and fair marketing that has uh, gone on relative to the cloud and the products that uh, are you know well uh, respected and and available in the cloud. So uh, even fast forward to today, we've taken well now it's over 30 companies into the cloud, and I and I I mean the the cloud these companies meaning there are no more servers everything from their uh, telephony uh, to their travel and expense management system to their ERP system to their financing system their finance forecast system you name it. Um, one of the things I found out with the cloud is it's amazing to me about if you do some homework and you look to try to figure out if there's an application out there that will you know, meet a need that you have, believe me, you can find it. Um, now, as with all things and in any industry, please do your homework because you want to make sure you're dealing with a reputable, reliable, uh, secure organization. But trust me, um, you can find it if you, if you do the diligence. Um, and the one thing I would tell you that uh, with what we do at T. Edward is, yes, we do this implementation work, but because we're finance background and you name it, we run the back office for a lot of these companies. And I can honestly tell you, uh, our organization is is, dispar is dis um, dispersed throughout the U.S. across five states, uh, but it's amazing how in sync we are not only with ourselves but with our clients. And it's all because of the cloud because I don't have to worry about where I am to access this information. I can pay bills and Starbucks if I want to. Um, so uh, um, I'm a big fan of Saturday Night Live. Some of you may not be, but uh, if you will just uh, uh, humor me uh, for a moment. But there was this great skit that uh, Jimmy Fallon used to do. It was called Nick Burns, Your Company Computer Guy. And the song would go, first he's going to fix your computer, and then he's going to make fun of you. Uh, he's Nick Burns, Your Company Computer Guy. And I will tell you, um, my focus is in the small to mid-sized business segment mostly these days. Nick Burns is alive and well out there. Um, sometimes you come across more progressive folks, but many, many times uh, you have one or two individuals, and in fairness to these folks, you know they're trying to uh, lock down, mitigate any problems, ensure reliability. But it's almost like a, uh, um, a never-ending battle, and it's almost like a, you know they're never going to win that uh, that battle because it's constantly changing. Um, and you know, to have one person or two people try to support that is, I think, somewhat unrealistic for organizations. Um, another great. Uh, uh, character that they had was uh, Phil Hartman used to do this thing, unfrozen caveman lawyer, uh, where uh, uh, he would say, you know, I've been frozen in time, and, uh, you know, I know I don't understand your complicated ways, and then he'd go into it, but I know my client slipped on the ice, and he's, you know, he's unable to, you know, payment for his injuries. So a little tongue-in-cheek about the unfrozen chief financial officer. Um, I think all of you uh, in finance, you know, are a lot more astute to technology than you may uh, lead on to, uh, and I would strongly recommend you you exercise that knowledge or learn more. And um, frankly speaking, it's very easy to learn a lot more about these applications, uh, given the you know accessibility we have with the net and looking up information. And not only here dealing with the performative, there's a lot of people uh, in this in the performative group that have experience in you know interacting with the cloud down to very specific applications. So I would definitely recommend you you exercise your prerogative in that area and take advantage of the uh, the wealth of knowledge, whether it's individuals or the database. And to give a shout out, as we recently just went through the election, uh, the democratization of applications, an application for every garage, um, and. I have three, uh, you know, business segments here: Soho, small office, home office, small to mid-sized business, and enterprise. What's amazing to me is you can make a small office, home office come across in terms of the footprint, first impression. If you're dealing with a vendor or a customer, uh, no different than how an enterprise could be viewed in the days of, you know, everything from paying a bill to sending an invoice to putting together a quote for a salesperson. It's amazing what you can do with some of these technologies that'll, you know, put you on par with you know companies like 3M or GM or PepsiCo uh, for that matter. Uh, so the point is 
these applications are both, you know, very capable, very cost effective for the, you know, small business, but they can be scaled to the enterprise. And, and some of the things I run into is people will say, uh, with some of the larger companies, we're going to have 5,000 users. You know, how can they scale to that? Well, when you look at some of these companies, Google, NetSuite, uh, Salesforce.com, I'd be hard pressed to find a company that has as many users on, a, on their servers as those organizations do. I don't believe there's any company in the world that's the size of any of the number of users that those companies have as well as many others. So again, going back to some of the scare tactics and the misinformation and the myths, don't be knocked off your, uh, your approach, you know, your, your, your vision, because you'd be amazed at the, the capabilities that these organizations can provide regardless of the size of your organization. So another joke, you know, I kind of talked about this, pick an app, any app. Uh, give you one example, uh, think about the retail segment. Um, in most retail operations, you know, large and small, you're going to have uh, several stores, right? And if you think about those stores like a house, right, you're going to have, you need internet connection, you're going to have utilities, you may have, you know, the keys get lost or broken, a window's busted, a toilet needs to be fixed, the landscaping needs to be taken care of. You know, there's all these things that, you, you know, these stores have to do. Many companies will go out there and they'll try to do it, you know, by themselves. They'll have one individual sitting up at corporate and he or she will get the, you know, the phone book out or go on to uh, the Internet and try to find somebody who's a locksmith, let's say, in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Well, there's uh, a great application out there, a company called Work Oasis, um, that what that company would do is they literally will manage the, you know, retail aspect, the, the retail property, to the point of if a store manager, let's say he comes in and, I don't know, somebody threw a rock through the window, he can make a call or enter the information into the, uh, into the system, I need this window repaired, they will then take that, they'll bid it out to two or three, uh, you know, uh, window replacement companies, get the best bid, they'll manage the entire process from when the, the technician shows up to fix the window, they'll call the store if the store hasn't entered that, you know, it was supposed to be fixed by a certain point in time, and now that's done. And now think about the amount of activity somebody just needed to type in something uh, when they were standing at the register there. Uh, but what's also most important about this is let's say you have 20 properties out there. You get one central bill for all those properties. So on the back end, the accountant and me love the way you can, you know, put all this stuff together into the ledger very quickly. Now, again, I'm not trying to, you know, as John alluded to, I'm not trying to tout this company. What I'm trying to express is that was a very specific niche need that was, you know, quite frankly, very inefficient was not really being run as best as it could, and yet we were able to go out and find something that fit our need perfectly and also fit our strategy of putting everything into the cloud. So I, I again, I profess to you that you know, do your homework. Believe me, you'll be able to find um, uh, applications out there that will help you uh, in terms of you know, getting the best out of your, uh, your system and for your company. So what's the future? You know, I, as I said, I started doing this back in 2007. I probably was even back to 2000 with the ASP days before we were truly cloud-based. But the whole thing about on-premise software, if you look at companies like SAP and Oracle, you know, these big, big organizations, they're trying to get into the cloud very, very quickly. Um, so this advent is happening. It will be there eventually where it will all be accessed via the cloud, my expectation would be. Um, so uh, and I, this is actually a picture of a gentleman from uh, Second Wind Exercise. We had a a Halloween party, and he was actually the Grim Reaper for software, and this was a salesperson. So you, uh, you definitely can have an impact across the organization. So, uh, uh, and that 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 uh, the uh, the thing there is not metal; it was actually uh, hard rubber. So I don't want to scare anybody, but it was pretty funny. And uh, to the extent that uh, you know, we think about the on-premise software and all the requirements and all the hoops we have to jump through and the support that we have to go through, you can literally wipe all of that out if you can adopt you know, cloud applications to run your organization. And challenges, yeah, there's going to be challenges. You know? But what's interesting to me is the challenges are usually the same as they would be if you're going from uh, one system to another system, doing an upgrade. So the challenges that you're going to meet should be familiar. And if you're a good project manager and you do the right things and make sure you're, uh, you know, intuitive and creative, you'll get through it. But the challenges that you're going to face, in my experience, have been no different than the challenges that you faced uh, 
when you've done this before, going from on-premise to uh, another on-premise system. So training is important, education is important, people being invested and involved is important. Uh, so there's really no news there to report. Just expect the challenges and make sure you address them. And, uh, you know, books, good to great. Jim Collins here is very interesting. You know, the, the real path to greatness, it turns out, is it requires simplicity and diligence. So really focusing on what's vital and what matters most and eliminating the extraneous distractions, right? So um, if you can just focus on you're paying for a service now, you want to get the best utility out of that application, the environment now exists for you to do this. And you can focus on the business and leverage the tools that are at your disposal today. And taking simplicity and diligence just a little bit further, uh, what you see building here is an example of what I would call a cloud-based infrastructure. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I usually tend to do is I do leverage NetSuite. There are other things out there, Workday, Intact, Plexus, and there's a whole host of other ones coming on board. SAP has an offering called Business by Design. So there's many things to look at and consider. But what's interesting to me about the cloud, and I, I don't want to be hypocritical here, these applications, almost think of them as bolt-on, but they're almost like capturing mechanisms that are going to capture information and put it into your system so that you can report on it. Relatively seamless, relatively easy in the cloud environment because of the nature of the information and how it's stored, et cetera. So there are ways to do this, uh, and you don't have to just be limited to one application to get it done. And finally, just a little tongue-in-cheek here. Somebody sent this to me, and if you remember the movie, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Um, I like to think it's cloudy with a chance of efficiency and cost savings. Uh, but I have not been in a situation yet where moving to the cloud has cost more money. It has been a cost savings and an efficiency gain uh, across the board. So I'm speaking from personal experience, and I'm fine to answer questions at the end. But at this point, I will give the control back to John and Kelly. Thank you so much. That was a great time to hear about your many experiences there in the cloud. Um, I'm going to go ahead at this point in time and launch our first polling question. You'll see it up on your screen in just a moment. Uh, there it goes. So um, once again, if you're here um, uh, and uh, desirous of getting CPE credits, you must take all three of the polling questions. But even if you're not, I uh, would love to see where folks stand vis-a-vis um, -vis these questions. These are simply statistical in nature, as you can see. Um, I would like to take a moment to remind you to feel free to ask questions at any time, and then we will uh, address those questions when we get to the Q&A portion of today's webinar. We'll go ahead and leave this open for another 10 seconds or so, and uh, allow everyone to get their vote in, and then we'll go ahead and move on to our next speaker. So I'm going to go ahead and close down the poll now. And we are going to get into the next section of our presentation uh, today, and it's my pleasure to introduce Kelly Bodner Battles. She is the CFO of Host Analytics. Prior to Host Analytics, Kelly was a VP of Finance at Ironport Systems, where she was the first finance hire and was responsible for building and leading the finance, accounting, administrative, and various operational functions during her six years there. During her tenure at Ironport, the company grew from $2 million to $250 million in annual bookings and was sold to Cisco Systems. Before Ironport, Kelly was a director in HP Strategy and Corporate Development Group, a strategy consultant with McKinsey & Company, and a corporate finance associate at J.P. Morgan. Kelly graduated with a BSE from Princeton and an MBA from Harvard, both with honors. Kelly has been the recipient of a YWCA Twin Award and was named as Finance Executive of the Year in the Network Products Guide to Hot Companies. Kelly, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you, John, for that nice introduction, and thank you, Tom, for that um, very interesting presentation. Uh, I'm very excited to be here today. Uh, thank you to the audience for your time and your interest in these topics, about which I am particularly passionate. Uh, um, so uh, I also am very well known for trying to cram too much content in too little time, so I'm going to get started. Um, so the purpose of today, uh, in my part, is to um, build on what Thomas talked about in terms of the CFO in the cloud, but use um, a specific case study example. And I'm going to use host analytics in our internal um, uh, situation, as well as corporate performance management as kind of the process that we'll focus on in terms of taking it into the cloud and what it can do for you. The roadmap for the next 20 plus, you know, 20-ish minutes is going to be a little bit of introduction and context. I'm going to explain, I'll touch a little bit on, on corporate performance management or what I call CPM, 
or I will refer to as CPM. And then I'm going to focus most of the time on um, using the cloud and technology to help us all be better in finance and the results um, that you can see if you get this right. So in terms of just a little bit of introduction and context, um, Host Analytics, um, so I'm the CFO of Host Analytics, as John mentioned. Uh, Host Analytics is uh, really the world's only complete and integrated CPM suite in the cloud. And by CPM, uh, that's a Gartner term, um, but it basically means an integrated decision support platform around financial applications such as budgeting, consolidations, metrics management, and automated, um, kind of a full suite of automated tools around internal and external reporting. Uh, we are a cloud company, so we have a lot of the benefits that are associated. We'll talk about uh, the cloud in a minute. Um, and we have innovative products with customers of all shapes and sizes. We tend to focus on the kind of the M of the SMB and enterprise, however. We all come to the table with biases. I have many in these topics based on my experience and just full disclosure, want to make sure that um, they're <laughs> understood as we, as we walk in. Um, so I divide my background into two stages, the kind of generalist years of keeping my options open and then my passion, kind of you know, I finally figured out what I want to be when I grow up years um, and that passion is operational finance. Um, in, in, in these areas have kind of some visceral learnings. The first is um, you know, I was absolutely trained to be a data hound and, I mean, viscerally trained, especially at McKinsey, the importance of rigorous fact-based decision making. So we're going to talk about that as it pertains to kind of being a finance person using the cloud, et cetera. Uh, second stage, operational finance, um, you know, I've been, uh, I have had the great fortune of working at some fantastic companies. Uh, but no matter how good the company is, uh, we all will face strategic potholes in the road. It is my fervent belief that it is how you maneuver around those potholes that um, defines you as a company, a team, and an executive. And bringing to bear this kind of fact-based decision-making discipline, or what I'll call let the data set you free, that's kind of my mantra at Host Analytics and has been throughout most of my operational finance career, is, is pro it provides a, a better way to get around those strategic potholes. Uh, as it provides a common language uh, and a common platform for good problem solving, and it helps to kind of disperse the the kind of uh, you know politics, emotions, bureaucracy, et cetera, that can cloud the way. So, it is my also fervent belief that we are in a very unique role in finance, as we are the keepers or the creators of a lot of the information or data um, laying around the company, and it is our challenge to evolve that role to get the stuff right that we're going to talk about today so we can evolve our role and help our companies uh, will actually get a bigger seat at the strategic table first and foremost and help our companies make better decisions. So uh, Tom alluded to kind of the role of finance. I have a little bit of a take on a, a kind of a, a, I like that, I love that, that uh, the view that Tom gave and I have a little bit of a different take um, in terms of if you compare our role over time. I think we are under a lot of pressure in finance to evolve our role. Um, and uh, from kind of the more stereotypical role um, that I think finance has played during history, uh, and we all know what it is, Tom alluded to it as well, uh, the bean counter, the reactive purveyor of rigid processes and late data, to, um, to the right-hand side, to the true strategic business partner who's proactively providing real-time information, flexible, um, flexible processes, to drive better decisions. So we move from reporting history to truly helping drive business results. And again, we're here today to talk about using the cloud, owning technology, and I'm going to use CPM as a case study to how to really enable this evolution. So not rocket science, so we need to get over there. So what's standing, just a little bit on what's standing in our way before we really focus on how to, how to, um, what to do about it. Um, so What's standing in our way first? So we are in an information explosion right now. Data is everywhere. Big data is everywhere. And it's exacerbated by our legacy in finance, and really across the company, but I think it's rooted in finance. Inefficient, disconnected people, processes, and systems, um, pasted together by manual processes that are painful for our teams, costly to support, um, are rife with errors, and can be very slow. And this is all in the context of a tough environment with increasing regulations, uh, harder compliance, and just constantly changing environment, plus the complexities of the global economy, et cetera. It's tough, and it's getting tougher out there. I think we all know this. What's the impact? We in finance, what do we like? We like control. What are we losing? 
<laughs> in this world control. Our impact is hindered and we're wasting money, often. And it leads to poor job satisfaction for our team. What do we do about it? So that's really what Tom and I are here to talk about today. And again, my big belief is, you know, let the data set you free, not enslave you. Let this information explosion play for what you need to get done, not hinder you. When I think about problem solving in an environment like this, I think about it in three um, uh, kind of buckets. People, process, and infrastructure. We've got to focus on getting this right. Not going to spend a lot of time on people today. We're going to spend a little time on corporate performance management processes and then spend more time on technology or infrastructure. And so what to do about it, kind of context, just a few personal learnings as, and, and really focused on kind of where technology in the cloud can help. So people, you know, technology, cloud technology is all about accessibility and collaboration and better information management across your company. So how can that help us on the people front? One, having a single source of truth of a wide range of information, which we'll talk about in a minute, can help us have a better, what I call, line of business point of view. I think we in finance can be too narrow and focused on you know, financial statements, which are lagging indicators. Cloud technology, getting this stuff right in, in CPM practices can help us be have, really build a metrics-driven culture and push for this better operational um, uh, decision making focused on leading indicators, not lagging indicators. The co collaboration of the cloud helps us get out of these silos. Two heads are better than one. It helps us collaborate with our teams with the kind of cross-functional browser-based web access. We can have a, this, this, this common view of our business, this cross-functional 360 view of our business that will help us collaborate across the team. Second process and policy. So my big kind of uh, pet peeve here is I think we tend to be focused on um, single processes in finance. What's your close time? What's your disclose time? How long does it take to your budget? Um, you know, we think about these as discrete processes and I'm, I'm a huge believer that we've got to think holistically about information across the organization as a process and let information pull these processes together. We've got to think holistically about our processes. So for me, I never talk close, always close and disclose, because for my team, for my company, the close is irrelevant. If we don't get this information that we're closing into the hands of our stakeholders, the close is irrelevant. But more importantly, we think beyond the close and disclose around how our overall strategy on managing our performance across our company is integrated, and I'll talk more about what that means in a minute. And then importantly, technology. So I, I think about technology in three steps. Set your vision and philosophy, find your right pillars, and then integrate and automate over time. So for us at Host Analytics, similar to what Tom was talking about, we are huge believers in the cloud. I you know, was a huge believer in the cloud at my prior company as well. Um, you know, uh, so we've invested early, and it is the cloud all the way. We're a very high-growth company, so I'm a big believer in investing ahead of the curve. I've been behind the curve. It is very painful. Never want to be there again. Uh, and, and the cloud all the way, we'll talk more about why. And Tom obviously talked about it as well. Find the right pillars. The good news, so, so by pillars, I mean your technology backbone, right? So the good news for finance today, we've got, you know, it used to be we only have ERP systems. ERP systems are very important. They're transaction engines. What's at the top of the finance value pyramid is not transactions. It is decision support. So the great news for finance today is there are more, uh, there are more um, tools and applications that you can sit on top of your core ERP system like CPM to help you with this decision support, right? So find your right pillars. At Host Analytics, it's NetSuite, and it's Host Analytics for ERP and core performance management. Then integrate and automate over time. I'm not going to talk a lot about that, but just you know, really focus on automation, integration, where you're you know, deep bottlenecking your processes and then and figuring out how you can get those bottlenecks out. And typically, it's not through throwing more people at it, uh, at least efficiently. It's not through throwing more people about, at it. It's about uh, deep bottlenecking through integrating your data or automating your, 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 your processes. Okay, so let's talk about information as a process very, as, as this is the case study, very, you know, um, Tom mentioned mission control. This is the way I think of mission control, and it's not rocket science. I think sometimes when you listen to experts on these topics, it sounds like you need a PhD in kind of statistical analysis to get this right. It is my fervent belief that that is not the case. 
Um, I've done this many times now, and when I think about building a metrics-driven culture or really establishing a good CPM environment in your company, I think about it very simply. Um, I start out by asking my functional execs several key, you know, f four key questions or sets of questions. The first is, what are you all about? What are you trying to accomplish, and how do you measure what you're comp accomplishing? What do you care about? I draw out a Venn diagram, and the intersection across the functional execs of that Venn diagram tend to be corporate metrics. The the kind of the fringes tend to be key metric functional metrics. I ask for five to ten. I don't ask for twenty to you know forty. It's too many to manage. Then I ask how frequently is it helpful and practical to collect and use this data. It'd be great to get closed gap financials on a weekly or daily basis. We all know that's not practical. There are some metrics. Like if you're a small company, cash and headcount that you want to look at daily, if, you know, weekly if not daily. Third and very important, what's the right context to judge your success? We're very good at looking at trends in finance, less good at looking, getting better at looking versus budget, less good at looking at how are my comparables doing, how are my com competitors doing, how do I look at my, my uh, performance and not in a vacuum of my own internal situation but also looking at external, the external environment. And then finally, what's the right format to look at this information? We, you know, we in finance are very good at production and volume. We need to tune for consumption, tune our reporting to our, the needs of our stakeholders. Is it weekly dashboards? Is it ad hoc reports that are query-based and simple and kind of on the fly? Is it structured regular reports? Is it full-on automated report books? So I include some examples, but for me, this is mission control. And nirvana, and what we're going to talk about today, is how to get all this in one single source of truth, one application, or one system that can allow you to have this 360 view of your business accessible across your, you know, whoever you want to be, um, uh, to have access, secure, so, and real time so that you can run your business appropriately and help your company make better decisions. So, you know, not, again, not rocket science, but what's we're happening today, right? We're not using technology to the fullest, right? We have disparate data, disparate processes, multiple charts of accounts, multiple ERP systems. We have siloed work streams, and ownership is not finance. Ownership is whoever's got the Excel spreadsheet or whoever has the latest email, right? Because all of this is pasted together typically, and we see this with our, with our, our prospects all the time with Excel and email. And what does that lead to? It leads to slow and hindered decision making. And so how do we use technology to solve this problem? We want an integrated, dynamic platform that allows you the single source of truth with this 360 view to data, right? It's not just financial. It's not just internal. It's operational and financial. It's external and internal. It's not just history. It's got future as well, your budgets and your forecasts. So one single source of truth for your 360 view with streamlined, integrated processes where your actuals feed your budget, feed your reporting in an automated fashion, and then your performance feeds your for, feeds your forecast, etc. Collaboration, no more silos, accessible to whoever you want to give access to, owned by finance, not IT. And with, what does this lead to? It leads to true fact-based decision making across the company. So let's talk about what you know. That's CPM and the the case study. So let's talk about SaaS now and the cl or the cloud. So. And I, I fundamentally agree with Tom wholeheartedly that on-premise software is like Blockbuster, right? <laughs> you know, on, it, it is going away. It is, you know, those Blockbuster stores, I, one just closed in my neighborhood in Menlo Park, right? They are going away, right? I believe that on-premise software is the same. In, you know, 10, 15, I don't know how long, year, how long it's going to take, but in the future, I believe that all software will be delivered as a service. Now. What does Gartner say? Gartner's, you know, one of the best analysts in the world. They are very focused right now on this nexus of forces. They think that, you know, software is going, you know, it's all about cloud, analytics, social, and mobile. And, you know, the if you look at the middle of the page, cloud ca category adoption is, you know, if you look at kind of where we're going, you know, content and collaboration, 56% per, uh, penetration by 2016. If you look at ERP, 
4%. Finance is lagging. Tom talked about the scare tactics, right? Finance is very conservative. The whole security question has been a big one for finance. I think, you know, we're just seeing with the likes of NetSuite and, and Intact really starting to show some, and, and host analytics, companies like ours that are really starting to get some true traction and some very high growth in, um, in serving finance. We're starting to see that finance is finally getting over the hump and understanding that concept that Tom touched on that Salesforce is a company that probably manages more users than any other company in the world. To do that, you have to be a security expert. Can your company provide that security expertise? Probably not as, a, as an individual company. It's what cloud companies live and breathe, right? Gardner asked CFOs today, how many, what percentage of your, your transactions are in the cloud? It's less than 10%. In four years, they think it's going to be more than 50%. So cloud, you know, finance is embracing the cloud finally. So why is this? So what are the benefits? It's, you know, from, you know, I view it as a couple key buckets. First and foremost, there's just a lower total cost of ownership. On the license, you don't have to pay a big monolithic multi-million dollar fee up front. You can pay as you go or grow, as I like to say. Simpler implementations mean lower consulting and people costs. And just generally, because you are not providing that IT backbone, you have dramatically reduced ongoing support costs from your IT team. No servers, no IT um, experts writing reports, et cetera. Quicker time to value and better access to innovation. It's interesting. I just did a webinar with uh, Paul Hammerman at um, Forrester. And his belief, and Gartner, you know, Forrester has done a bunch of uh, interviews on this, that actually lower cost of total cost of ownership is actually getting less important to finance than agility and innovation. Um, but, but quicker time to value, implementation in weeks, not years. We have a saying around host analytics, innovation included, right? Upgrades are free and they're frequent. You don't have to have a big behemoth upgrade that's you know costs more money, more millions, or or at least hundreds of thousands in in software and services because with SaaS models the upgrades are included in the subscription price. And just generally more innovative products. We're, bit, we're newer architecture, we're newer companies. Um, and it's not just about features, it's about this collaboration, this access, better data management and integration, security, mobility, and more. And then finally, the third bucket, sorry, yeah, the third bucket is just the balance of power shift from IT owning these applications and controlling them and the time it takes to get things done from, in, in, from big things like implementation to small things like re report writing to the business stake owner increasing, or owner owning, which gives you this agility, this flexibility, this real-time um, dynamic use case evolution as you evolve your business model, you can evolve your use case without, you know, kind of owning it along the way and improve functional ownership and governance. So now let's talk about host analytics. So, um, you know, host analytics is a privately held company. We're high growth, um, but you know, we're 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 still on the you know we're still um, lean and and uh, you know privately held. And when when I joined three and a half years ago, uh, I'm, I was like any new executive wanting to come in and change things, um, uh, kind of get them to kind of kind of where I thought they should be. I focused, you know, my PPT, my people, process, and technology. Uh, uh, structure or framework, I focused on people first. I spent about six months getting the people and the processes where I wanted them to be. And then we embarked on a massive technology uh, project. Uh, and, and Well, massive. We did six, we implemented six technologies, SaaS technologies in six months with a team of, you know, a, a kind of a lean, mean team in finance. Um, we implemented, we did a complete re-implementation of host analytics to consolidate budget, report, do all of our metrics management. We implemented NetSuite. We implemented paychecks and expense wire for payroll and T&E automation. Um, and then we implemented Avalara, which is a sales tax add-in um, that, that links to our uh, NetSuite. And then we implemented Boomi for data integration across some of our key corporate applications. So six applications in six months. So to me, I, I get asked all the time, what's the value of SaaS? We just spent a page on it. But for me, the soundbite is that my lean team could implement six applications in six months. At Ironport, my prior company, um, you know, uh, when we were getting ready to go public, we actually implemented um, an on-prem ERP system. It was supposed to take a year and cost a million dollars. It took two years and cost two million dollars. Um, and we had to put 
all other uh, applications, uh, in, in finance application implementations on hold during that time. So for me, that in a nutshell is one of the key value propositions of SaaS, the simplicity of the implementation, the agility of the applications allows that different paradigm, six applications in six months versus one in basically two years. And then let's talk about, so that's kind of holistically, and then let's talk about an example of kind of a process that's near and dear to many of our hearts, the close and disclose process. So when I got, to, when I got to Host Analytics, at best, we were 10 days to close and disclose, six days to close, four days to disclose. Um, on average, we were 13 for the whole process. After we implemented that, after we went through the people process and technology, so it's not all technology. The, the value is not accruing all to technology, but technology was a lot of the value. We de-bottlenecked to get to four days consistently. Close was three, disclose was one. And, and, and so, you know, there are, there are many contributors you can see here, but, but the general, the, the biggest contributors were automating these processes and using technology in the cloud to um, provide a more scalable automated infrastructure. And so what does that do? I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand what that does. That six days, you know, we have, what, 20, roughly 20 months in a, in a, in a 20 days in a, in a business month. Getting six days back from my team was huge, 60% reduction. That allowed us to spend less time on the mechanics and more time on the value add. And get, also importantly, let's not forget our customers and our stakeholders, we were able to get that information, that key information into the hands of our stakeholders six days faster so that they could do something with it. They could make better decisions, make different decisions, make faster decisions. Uh, so again, this is just one process de-bottlenecking example of what this technology can do for you. Okay, so for me, the best results of all. So, you know, uh, Aberdeen did a study uh, a couple, you know, a year and a half, two years ago, where they basically looked at best-in-class companies and they they interviewed them along ten prior ten parameters. I'm showing the three that are most relevant today, um, and then they then they uh, interviewed cloud CPM customers. And the great news for us is that our you know full suite customers, where our customers are in the green, provide were the was the only our customers were the only uh, CPM customers to uh, to uh, perform better as well or better than best in class in all ten. And these are the top three kind of that are most relevant today. And for us, the most important news is that our customers were more profitable because they were better able to make better decisions. So wrapping up, um, concluding thoughts. Promoting fact-based decisions throughout the corporation is critical to our evolving role, just generally. Independent of technology, independent of, you know, philosophically, we've got to do this. I hope that Tom and I have helped convince you that cloud, the cloud can help you do this, and that specifically using cloud-based financial applications can help elevate the role, add rigor and agility to your processes, and expand collaboration and do all this with hopefully dramatically reducing your costs, but certainly without in, in increasing your costs. And with that, I will turn it back over to John. Thank you very much Fantastic. for your time and attention. Fantastic. That was great information. Thanks so much, Kelly. Um, gosh, we've got some great questions piling up here. So what I'm going to do is really quickly go through the uh, two CPE questions that we have remaining. Uh, I'm launching the, uh, the first of those two right now. Um, well, let's get those done. I'm actually going to skip showing this to everyone because we've got these great questions I think we should move on to address. Uh, but typically we do follow up um, a few days after the event and we'll actually post the polling results uh, on performative as resources so you can check out how uh, everyone voted um, because there are some interesting results I saw in the, uh, the first poll question uh, and actually in this poll question as well. So. Um, Let's go ahead and give another 10 seconds uh, to let everyone answer this. And then we'll go ahead and close this poll down and go to the final polling question, which I will launch right now. <clears throat> and I'd like to remind you that um, we do request that you stay on for just one minute after we finish today's webinar. And then we will be finished in about six minutes here <clears throat> in order to um, uh, take the survey. Um, give us feedback, let us know uh, what we didn't do well, what we did do well, what we should do differently next time. And also, as a reminder, if you'd like to connect with either of today's speakers, either Tom Kelly or Kelly Bodner Battles, um, we may get just a quick of a mouse and we're happy to uh, make that introduction for you uh, after today's event. 
So I'm going to go ahead and give five more seconds for this final poll, and then we'll get into these questions. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close it out right now, and let's get into the Q&A. Uh, first question, I'll toss this one out to Kelly. Um, if your stakeholders are waiting until the end of the month financials to make a decision, of course they've waited too long. How do your systems, how does living in the cloud help get information um, in close to real time for the elements of information that could benefit from being close to real time? Yeah, so I mean I think the beauty is, is that um, you with the cloud, uh, you can have this, again, this concept of the single source of truth and and getting the information into the single source of truth as quickly as you've got it, and then allowing that to be accessible across the organization is how you get better decisions, right? So having the information there accessible and real time, right? And so I think, you know, it's, and, and you know, we talk about the close and disclose as just being part of the, or the close being part of the information you have. Like, for instance, you know, in, in, our, in our CPM repository, we, again, we don't just have the financial close information in there. We don't just have, I mean, I believe that those are leading or lagging indicators, right? We have, um, you know, we have internal information, we have external, we have backward looking, we have forward looking, we have financial uh, metrics as well as key operational drivers, right? And then we have analytical tools within there, reporting and analytical tools that can help the users, not just finance, even though we own the implementation, um, we you know, it allows this collaborative environment, allows our users to go in and look at the information, run analytics on the information, uh, run reports, and have access to the information that's, that's appropriate for them at, you know, as Tom said, basically 24-7, 365 days a week. So they can run their business with the information at their fingertips, right, versus the old world which is just lagging financial statements that come out two to three weeks at best after the close, and that's what people use, right? It's just a bigger, broader set of information with better analytical tools and better accessibility real time for stakeholders. And um, we run our company out of the cloud entirely as well, and I, I could not agree more. Um, it's amazing. The, uh, uh, the data, the analytics that we have at our fingertips 24-7. We might not have the entire financial close, which includes things like journal entries and, and other fun things, but, um, you know, on a daily basis. But we've got an awful lot of that information um, at our fingertips, and it's really just a different world. Uh, question for Tom Kelly. Um, where do you see the biggest cost and efficiency gains from moving to the cloud? And Tom, I'm going to ask you to answer relatively quickly here, but once again, the biggest cost and efficiency gains from moving to the cloud, if you could focus on, let's say, a top two, what would that be? Uh, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Okay, the top two. <laughs> I mean, just in terms of your, your, your daily business processes, I mean, think about today how you actually cut a check and everything you go through, you know, from printing vouchers out, stapling vouchers together. I, mean, I, I do this uh, rant, if you will. But frankly speaking, just take a step back and think about it, and everybody who's involved in getting a check out the door for your organization. Um, with some of the capabilities, you literally, if you digitize the invoice and everything, you can do it all online, click a button, you know, check a box, click a button, and another company is going to process and mail that check out. So it goes back to kind of the example I was giving before where somebody who's working out of their home can look like a 3M when, you know, you get that payment. It's very professional. It's professionally processed. Um, just in general, I mean, it, it's hard. You know, what are the two top ones? Well, you know, it's somewhat unique to the organization. Some people do processes more efficient than others. But frankly speaking, I think in many cases with the cloud, everybody tends to focus on the ROI, and they forget about the efficiency gains across the board. So I'd argue you can find efficiency gains in, in many, many areas of the organization. Great. Wonderful. And with this, we have one minute left. We want to be mindful for everyone's time. Um, we have a pile of questions here. I hate to say it. Uh, we had great content in the presentations, but we're not going to have time to get to all the questions. Um, Tom and Kelly, would you mind if we worked with you um, to get these questions posted on Performative and have you guys address them out um, to the, uh, the audience uh, of Performative so everyone can see them? And we'll try and do that within the next 24 hours. Um, would you mind if we worked with you on that? Not at all. Not a problem. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, let's go and hit a couple of other items here before we finish up. 
Um, I've already reminded about the short survey. If you have any questions about CPE credit at all, um, please contact Chris Brower, and you can see her email at the bottom uh, of the page here. Um, she's very quick to respond. She's also very quick to get those CPE uh, credit uh, PDFs out to folks, so you should be seeing those within 24 hours. Um, we'd like to thank Host Analytics and NetSuite not only for sponsoring today's event and allowing us to do this and everything we do at Performative at absolutely no cost to our users, but also for getting us wonderful speakers who aren't just sales and marketing folks for the company. These are longtime practitioners, senior finance uh, executives with great backgrounds talking about the real problems that they face and uh, how they've used technology in their roles as finance leaders to transform their organizations. That's what today's webinar was about. Uh, and we had wonderful speakers today. And really, a, a tremendous thanks to Tom and Kelly. Thanks so much for being with us today and giving us the benefit of all of your experience. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Our pleasure having you. And thanks, of course, to everyone who joined us today. Um, we'd like to uh, leave you with a final thought, which is um, if you think this information is great, please join us at performative.com. Not only will you be seeing the answers to the questions that we didn't get to today, uh, but also you'll be able to get advice and insight um, and see what's going on uh, from tens of thousands of your peers. Um, so uh, thanks, everyone, for your time and attention today. We hope to see you again at another performative event or online at performative.com. And we wish you all a great week. Take care, everyone.